Hi and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this video we're going to continue with our controller class and we're going to create a menu so that the user can choose whether to add customers, remove customers, find customers or quit the program. So what I'm going to create here is a run menu um, method. In it I'm going to create a scanner. Sorry, this I keep making this mistake. This doesn't have, um, of course, a block after it. So we create the new scanner, and this is going to let us get user input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the options the user has. Press A to add. Press P well R to remove to find and Q to quit. Okay. So this is that. And then we're going to get the user input. And then we're going to do while input equals Q, and of course, like that. So while the input is not equal to Q, it means the user doesn't want to exit because Q is for quitting. So while input doesn't equal Q, we do something if input equals A oh, uh, missing that. that if input equals A, sorry about that then we do ask node of course else if input equals R we do forward uh, customer, person, not customer. Else if input equals F, we do find. And if the input doesn't equal any of those, then we do unknown command. Okay, so that is that. So if the input is A, we run the ask node method. If the input's R, we forward person or root or move one. If the input's F, we find. And if not, we do unknown command. There's one small mistake with this that you will see in a second. First of all, there is no thing that says enter your choice here. So let's ignore that for a second and then we can go to A. Enter the customer name. Hmm. And it just keeps going. That's not good. So we stop it here. So how do we do this? We are creating, well, we're displaying the options up here, and we're also assigning the input up here outside of the while loop. So this input, when it gets into the while loop and is starting to repeat over and over again, is just going to be the input that we got up here because we're never changing it. So if we select A, we're just going to be adding and adding and adding and adding over and over again. So what we want to do is that first because that was annoying and then we want to copy this and put it there okay so let's 
re-explain what happened here again. And then I'm going to make one last change that's going to make it a bit more readable. We create the scanner, we tell the user its choices, we put them in a string, we put the choice that the user made in a string, and then we check. If the input is not equal to Q, we're going to keep repeating what comes afterwards. If it's A, we ask for a new node. If it's R, we remove a node. If it's F, we find a node. And if not, we print an unknown command. And then we ask the user again. We reassign input, and then we go back. If the user here chose Q, when we go back, we're not going to be printing anything out. Because if it's Q, we're simply skipping the while loop. OK, so this is that. There is one way to make this a bit more readable. Which is grabbing this, or rather, all of that, putting it there, doing that instead. And now we have a method that is going to do this. And what we can do here is we can say, instead of all of that, string input is ask input. And now when we run this, we come up here, we tell the user the options, we get the input, and we return that, and this is what gets assigned over to our string in this other method. And similarly, we can do the same up here. Simply because this way it is easier to read. So now we have one method that is going to do this instead of having it twice inside this method here. Let's play and see what happens. Now we have A to add, R to remove, F to find, Q to quit, and to your choice. Let's add. Okay, and there we have it again. Now we can enter your choice. We can add a new one. And your choice, we are going to find. Okay, there we have it. It's kind of not really very readable either, because everything just comes out one after another, and it's not too great. So, what can we do to solve this? I think that after the output, or rather before each menu, we need to have a line at least between the output of the program and the next iteration of the menu. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do this. Backslash n is going to add a new line. And then I'm going to add a few of those, which are just dashes. Let's see what happens here. Backslash n is going to add a new line. The dashes are just going to be dashes. And now we have the dashes up here. And now it's a bit better, I think. We can You see? We made a mistake with the menu. That's quite embarrassing. Um and to your choice, of course, we need to put A instead of Hillary there. So so you can see the program didn't crash though. Like that. And there we have our two uh, nodes. We can remove, remove, and then if we find something, we're not going to find it. I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen if we remove. Nothing happens. Okay. So there we go. No error. It doesn't crash, which is good. Although it doesn't tell me that it can remove anything. So maybe that's a fix you can implement into your program if you have the time and the willpower to do so. Pressing Q just ends the program, and that is the end of this video as well. So thank you for watching. This was a bit of a long video, but trust me, making the menu instead of simply having to program it yourself in the main method is worth it. Now, this is a lot simpler and the user now has control over what happens in the application. Also, making the menu readable is important. Don't just make it um, annoying to read or to deal with because that is annoying. Um, okay, so apart from that, let's move on to the next presentation. So I'll see you there.